Hello everyone, welcome back to the Layer 3 curriculum. My name is Arul Richardson and I'm from the Technical Knowledge Management Group. And yes, I will be the lead instructor for this onboarding program. So what's there in today's video is that we will discuss about the various types of IPv6 addresses. Now, just to give you a hint, if you're familiar with the various types of IPv4 addresses, then this video will be pretty easy for you. Even if you are not aware of any of the types of IPv4 addresses, it's still okay, you can continue. But I would recommend you to just go through the IPv4 address types and then try to come and follow this video. So, let's begin. So let's discuss in depth about unicast address or to be more specific IPv6 unicast addresses. It is one to one communication. It's via a single interface in most of the cases. Let's take an example of a general network where unicast communication is something like this where you have one interface to one interface communication, one host to one host communication. So that's unicast address. Let's see what are the types of unicast addresses. Now, the first type of unicast address that we are going to discuss is global unicast. Now keep these terms in mind. Of course, these are new terms, but these are very, very easy terms when it, when it is compared to IPv4. So global unicast is an address which can be routed globally, which means that it's an address that can be used in the internet. So can you remember something from IPv4? Yes, you are absolutely correct. These are similar to public addresses in IPv4. So public addresses are addresses which can be routed globally in the internet. In a similar way, global unicast addresses are also addresses, but IPv6 addresses which can be announced globally. These addresses are also purchased from IANA for some cost and you then can use these addresses for connecting to the internet. Now in IPv4, if you want to identify a public IP address, it was basically class A, class B, class C addresses, excluding the reserved addresses. Now in IPv6, it's not that difficult. It's pretty easy. You have a range and if you see any addresses that belong to that specific range, then that's a global unicast address, yes. So, if you see this address, 2000 colon colon 3, this is the global unicast address. Now, if you see that over here, I have not defined any host bit, which basically means that this is my network address. So, any network that belongs to 2000 colon colon 3 is my global unicast address. Let's dig more to find some some minute details about this address. Now you can see that here you have slash 3, which means that my network bits in a IP address are always same. If I define a network, so all of my host will have different different IP addresses, but the network bits are going to be the same. In a similar way, over here slash 3 means the first three bits of my IPv6 address will be the same. Now again, going back to the previous video where I explained IPv6 addresses, and over there, I explained an IPv6 address is a combination of eight hextet, and each number is a hexadecimal number, and every hextet is separated by a colon. So over here, the double colon means that the remaining seven hextet are zeros, and 2000 is my first hextet. So in order to find the first three bits, okay, keep in mind the first three, again, the first three bits, I need to convert this hexadecimal into binary. So in order to find the first three bits, it's enough for me to convert the first number because this is a hexadecimal number, which means four binary digit. 
this is another hexadecimal number which is another four binary digit and i'm sure that my three digits my three bits can be recovered from the first binary digit itself but still i'll write the binary form of the first two digits that is two zero so two in binary can be written as zero zero one zero and this zero in binary can be written as zero 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 now just in case if you're not familiar with uh, the conversion of hexadecimal to binary and pause this video right now over here and give me a call i'll try to explain you these conversion but i'm sure you should know this even if you don't know use google or something else anyways to continue our intent is to find the first three bits so over here i can see that this is my first three bits so in a network my first three bits should be same so this three bits will be the same but in order to complete one hexadecimal number i need four digits which means that this fourth digit can be anything but in binary a digit can have only two possibilities a binary number can be either a zero or a one so if my binary digit is a zero which is zero zero one zero then the hexadecimal equivalent number is two in the same case if my fourth digit is one then my hexadecimal equivalent number is three so what does this prove that now I have my range of global unicast addresses, which is from 2000 to 3FFF colon colon 3. So the thumb rule is, if you see any addresses, I repeat, if you see any IPv6 addresses, which is starting with 2 or which is starting with 3, it belongs to global unicast address and that is the reason why i explained all of these examples just to let you know how i derived this range i hope it's clear let's discuss more on some of the fields of the global unicast address so this is a typical ipv6 global unicast address since it's ipv6 so you have 128 bit address so from here here this is a 128 bit address now if it's a global unicast address we know the first three bits a few moments ago we talked we spoke about this the first three bits are the same so the first three bits is my 001 the next 45 bits is my global routing prefix now this is something which is assigned by iana so every organization which connects to the internet has a defined global routing prefix which it can use with the combination of 001 to make it a 48 bit global unicast address so the global routing prefix is being assigned by the iana at some specific cost the 001 basically stands for the first three bits of the global unicast IPv6 address. So the combination of 001 with the global routing prefix together forms the 48-bit unique network address of a specific organization which has been assigned by the IANA. Now the next 16 bits is my subnet id okay so let's take an example of an isp if an isp wants to run internet so he goes to the internet authority he buys a specific network which is global routing prefix and with 001 he gets the first 48 bits now this isp will use the 16 bits and divide his network in different different subnets and these subnets the isp might allocate to different different customers to keep these networks different 
and that's how the isp will give a 64 bit network to a specific client of its own the next 64 bit which is highlighted in yellow is called as the interface id and this interface id is nothing but the host bits where the host can be defined for every subnets that have been defined in the ipv6 address together 128 bit ipv6 address is formed and this is how the classification is made i hope it's uh, clear now that we know what global unicast address is and also it was very easy to identify a global unicast if a number starts with 2 or 3 then that specific ipv6 address is a global unicast address now let's move on to the next type of ipv6 address and that is called as unique local now again unique local is very easy have you heard of private addresses in ipv4 absolutely addresses that cannot be announced globally which can be used in a specific network but it cannot be used to communicate with the internet these addresses are called private addresses but in ipv6 we don't call them private we call them unique local the purpose still remains the same only the name changes so unique local addresses are addresses that cannot be routed globally in the internet okay just like in ipv4 we had some addresses which were reserved for private like 10.0 range like 192.168 range in a similar fashion for ipv6 as well we have a specific address which is reserved for unique local and that is fc00 colon colon 7 again let's do the math now here we have slash 7 slash 7 means the first 7 bits of my network are going to be the same so my first 7 bits can be recovered from first hexadecimal which will give me 4 numbers the second hexadecimal which is again in 4 so my first 7 bits can be recovered from the first 2 hexadecimal digits so let's elaborate the first 2 hexadecimal f can be written as 1111 and c in binary can be written as 1100 0. again the first 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 oh i'm sorry 7 these 7 bits are going to be same so in order to complete one specific hexadecimal number i need a combination of four binary digits over here i have three so i have one binary digit which can have any value again the binary digit can have only two values so either it can be zero or a one now there is another twist which is in unique local and that is called the last bit okay the eighth bit is called as the l bit now this is a bit which is a special bit okay and the l bit is always one the l bit to be equal to zero is reserved for future purpose and the l bit is always one which basically makes my first number as f and if it is f f zero one it is d so to cut it short my unique local address starts with fd00 zero zero colon colon 8 so if any ipv6 address starts with fd it is a unique local address and it cannot be routed globally in the internet the next type of ipv6 address that we are going to see is link local now link local addresses are pretty new and there were no similar addresses in ipv4 so this is something new in ipv6 and let's see what is this link local as the name sounds it's only for a specific link so these addresses are local to a link so whenever you enable uh, ipv6 interface by default you have a link local address which is auto configured so let's take an example of this network 
Now in this network, the moment I enable IPv6 on a specific LIF or a specific interface, immediately this interface will be assigned with a link local address. And this link local address is automatically calculated and assigned on this specific interface. Now all the communication that happens locally from this link to this link only over here in this part of the network it happens over link local addresses okay these addresses are not carried from one network to another no these are only local to this specific link and therefore they are called link local addresses now these addresses are pretty useful for NDP, which is neighbor discovery protocol. We will discuss about neighbor discovery protocol in the next modules. But just keep in mind that these play a very important role in protocols as well like OSPF to form neighborship with the remote or the peer uh, router. So basically link local uh, local addresses which cannot be routed globally and these are addresses which are automatically configured on an IPv6 enabled interface or logical interface. So just like Global Unicast Unique Local, they had a specific range defined. In a similar fashion, even Link Local can be identified by a specific range. And the range for Link Local is FE80 colon colon slash 10. Now this is a network address. Now again, let's do the math. FE80 colon colon 10. 10 means the first 10 bits are going to be the same. So in order to recover 10 bit from a hexadecimal IPv6 address, let's split them. Okay. The first, the first digit will give me four bits, the next four and the next four. So 12, I should recover my first 10 bits using the first three digits of the hexadecimal number. So let's elaborate. I can write my FV80 as 1111, which is my F. E in binary is written as 1110. 8 is written as 1000. Okay, I won't, uh, I won't include the last zero because I get my 10 bits using the first three digits. Now let's find the range. 10 means my first 10 bits are going to be unchanged. So this is going to be unchanged, which leaves me with the next two bits. Now, as I said, a binary can have two combinations, either a zero or a one for one bit. Now, if there are two variable bits, then two bits can give me four different combinations. If you are a binary expert or if you know something about binary, you should easily understand. So this 0, 0 can be 0, 0, can be 0, 1, like over here. If it is 0, 1, the combination of my first three bits will be FE9. If it is 1, 0, then the combination will be FEA. And if it is 1, 1, it will be FEB. So I'm sure that you won't find this in most of the internet that you Google. For link local, in most of the internet, it's referred to as FE80. And in most of the cases, even in the labs that we are going to do, we will see FE80 in uh, almost all of the cases. Keep this fact in mind that FE80 is not the only link local address that you can find in the IPv6 world. If an IPv6 address starts with FE9 or FEA or FEB, it means that this is also a IPv6 link local address. And that's why the slash 10 is of so important, it will give you the range. And that's all that you need to know about link local addresses. So we are done with the important types of uh, IPv6 addresses. Now, these are more types of IPv6 addresses. Uh, these are referred to as the special IPv6 addresses. Uh, something that you need to know. The first one is unspecified. So this unspecified address is a special IPv6 address 
which is assigned to an interface, uh, in most of the cases a host, which does not have an IPv6 address configured. So it's a layer 3 interface, uh, but it does not have a real IPv6 address configured over it. So such kind of interfaces are assigned with uh, unspecified address, something that you cannot assign, okay, it's uh, by default by the system and it is recognized by this IPv6 address. It's basically all hex state with zeros slash 128. Now use your brilliant skills of shortening the IPv6 addresses because here you can see zeros. So using those brilliant skills, if you have guessed, yes, you can write it as double colon, which basically means all zeros slash 128. And it's very important to note that you cannot assign these addresses to a specific interface of a host. Even if you try, the EMS in ECI will give you an error or notification and in the CLI, it will give you a comment fail. So just in case if you are not familiar with these terms, never mind. I will guide you with all of these in the future curriculum as we progress with this onboarding program. For now, just keep in mind that this is a special address which is assigned by the system. And you as a user, you are not supposed to use these addresses to configure a specific interface. The next type of uh, address is a loopback. Now, just don't get me wrong that I have classified this address as a special address. This is not the loopback that you use in the day-to-day -day life in all of the protocols wherein you configure the loopback as your router ID and so on and so forth. This loopback is called as a universal loopback. Now, if you remember, there is a special address in IPv4, which is called as 127 dot zero dot zero dot zero now this is a special address which is reserved for universal loopback for internal host communication now this is ipv4 the similar format in ipv6 is zero 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 basically double colon one i hope you understand again using your brilliant skills of shortening so a double colon one which means a one in the host bit Slash 128, this is called as a universal loopback address in IPv6. So in IPv4, you had one whole network that is 127 range, which was reserved for this universal loopback address. But in IPv6, you just have one single address, which is double colon 1 slash 128. I hope it's clear. Now that we are familiar with the IPv6 unicast addresses, Let's move on to the next type of IPv6 address and that is multicast. Now with the new version of the internet protocol, the way multicast works is not changing. So basically the way multicast is working, it still remains the same. It's the same like uh, IPv4. Let's take an example of a small network. So on the left hand side, you can see a unicast network. And on the right side, you can see the multicast network. So in this network, there are receivers. Let me use the pointer. So these are the receivers over here. And they wish to receive a single same stream from a specific host, which is located in some part of the network. Now in unicast, since it's one to one, so for these three receivers, there is a need for three different streams so that they can access and receive the stream which they intend to. But now over here, there are only three users, but just assume that in a real case scenario, for example, when you're trying to browse or when you're trying to stream live cricket or football matches, you have millions of users who are trying to stream the same source. Now in such cases, it's not possible for Unicast to send millions of streams for millions of different users. This will really choke the network. So multicast is a good option where the host 
which is the producer of the stream sends the stream to the multicast capable router and that router will now replicate these streams and provide it to all of the receivers in that specific network as you can see it in the right side of this network this is much much better than using unicast of course there are different protocols which are used to make this possible like in IPv4 we use IGMP and PIM and in IPv6 we use MLD and PIM don't worry we will discuss about them in deep in our multicast module we have a separate video for it but for now just keep in mind this is the advantage of multicast so basically multicast means communication of one to many and this is the advantage over unicast now in IPv6, it's very easy to identify a multicast address just like in IPv4 we had a defined range where the class D addresses were multicast addresses. Similarly in IPv4, we have a defined range which is if any IPv6 address starts with an FF, it is called as a multicast address. Now this address also has different different fields so the ff resembles to the first eight fields which is ff which means it's a multicast address the next four bits of this address uh, is for flag now these flag bits they tell you if the multicast address is a dynamic or a well-known address the next four bits, that is this one, of the multicast address, this defines the scope of the multicast address, whether this multicast address is local to a network or it can be routed. So 84412 and the remaining 112 bits which together forms 128 so the next remaining 112 bits of a multicast address it stands for group ID so all of the group addresses that a multicast user wants to connect to the group address is defined by the next 112 bits there are some well-known multicast addresses the first one is ff02 colon colon 1 now as you can see over here ff means it's a multicast address so ff02 colon colon 1 this is for all node multicast address now this is very similar like a broadcast in ipv4 so all of the network elements be the router or host everyone who is multicast enabled or everyone who has uh, multicast enabled will listen to this specific address so any packet that is sent with a destination as ff02 colon colon 1 it is basically sent to all multicast nodes the next well-known ipv6 multicast address is ff02 colon colon 2 and this address is all router multicast address now this is an address which all of the routers which have multicast enabled they will listen to these addresses so any packet which has destination as ff02 colon colon 2 will be received by all of the routers and these routers will listen to these addresses meaning that they will receive this address and then open the address and see what's there in this specific packet okay so these are the well-known ipv6 multicast address okay so the last type of ipv6 address is called anycast now anycast is a global unicast address but only marked as anycast so until now we have seen all the types of addresses which can be visually identified everyone had a specific range for example multicast so anything that starts with ff is a multicast ipv6 address but in any cast this is not the case you cannot identify uh, any cast address just by looking at it 
Anycast is basically a global Unicast address, but it has this Anycast option enabled. Now, how to enable this? I will explain it during the labs. Don't worry, it's a few videos after this. So I will explain where and how you can enable it. But for now, just keep in mind that uh, Anycast address is a global Unicast address, which has just been enabled with Anycast feature. So this global Unicast address can be assigned to multiple devices. So these all devices in our network can be assigned with the same global Unicast address. So unlike normal IPv6 and global Unicast, if you do this, you will have a loop. But with Anycast, you don't because basically Anycast is a phenomenon where a host will reach the closest destination. Okay, that's, that's the definition of Anycast. Now this is very similar to multicast, but not exactly the same. How? Now I know that if I have a specific network and I have three servers in a multicast scenarios, if these three servers want to receive the same stream, then basically they connect to a single group and this group is a multicast address and the source sends stream to this single group address. Now in any cast, what happens is the host sends data to this single Anycast but global Unicast address. But what is the difference is in a multicast, each of the server will receive the stream, but in Anycast only one, that is the closest server, will receive the data. So that's the difference between Anycast and multicast. So Anycast is really useful for uh, for applications like uh, using redundant uh, DNS. So for example, in an office, I have three DNS servers, one, two, and three. And if one of them fails, if I don't have any cast, then this host won't be able to reach the DNS server. With any cast, what will happen is all of the three IPv6 servers, that is one, two, and three, first will have the same IPv6 address. So I can assign them as, let's say 2000 colon colon one slash 64. I'll assign the same address to server number two as well, 2000 colon colon one slash 64. And I'll assign the same IPv6 address to server three. And these IP addresses are advertised in the routing protocol. So now in this case, when again my server fails, server number one is down with the routing protocol, the host is directed to the next closest DNS server. In this case, it is server number two. It might be some other servers as well. Now the implementation of Anycast is really good. It's easy when it comes to one single organization, but when it comes to internet, it is a bit complex. Well, I hope that this video was informative and I hope you understood all of the types of IPv6 addresses and I hope that this video was helpful for you to know the different types of IPv6 addresses. And yes, see you in the next part of the video where we will discuss more and more on the layer 3 contents of this onboarding program. And yeah, thanks for watching.